What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. It's been a little while. It took a little while. I hope that's okay. But welcome back. We're here for another Filmstruck Film Club Pick of the Week. If you've been here before, you may be like, whoa, man, you got a different background. I don't see Groot anywhere. And you're right. I'm, I'm on a little bit of a vacation. So we're catching up. We're finishing up a spectacular month of films. We, we celebrated Pride Month. And we watched films directed by uh, LGBTQ filmmakers. So we watched uh, a John Waters film. We watched uh, the beautiful film Pariah by D. Reese. And then uh, to finish it up, I wanted to just kind of hit, you know, somebody I'd never really spent much time with before. In fact, zero time with before. Uh, and I actually was inspired to pick this film by John Waters because when we watched Female Trouble, uh, I was watching an interview with him where he said he... Something along the lines of he like prays at the altar of Pasolini. And Pasolini is someone I only really knew of through the film Sallow or 120 Days of Sodom. And boy, am I glad we didn't watch that this week. Um, <laughs> but it was cool because when I went to go look him up, I went on the Criterion channel and I saw that there was a film on there, the one that we watched this week, Theorem. Hope I'm saying that right. Or Theorem. Theorem is Pasolini's 1968 film starring Terrence Stamp, who maybe you recognize him from, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, but this film really kind of caught me off guard in a really good way. Uh, before we get into that, I'm, I'm just going to say a couple things. Um, I didn't really know much about Pasolini before picking this film. I knew that he uh, had famously... Uh, made Sallow, which is like the most controversial movie of all time, and if you have a, a weak stomach, definitely never watch that film, ever. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't even know what happened to him. I didn't know how his life ended uh, before I picked this film. Uh, so for those that don't know, Pasolini was murdered on November 2nd, 1975, in the street, uh, three weeks before Sallow came out theatrically. Uh, it is still an unsolved murder. Uh, it's a gruesome murder. This poor guy. Um, but yeah, I really, do, I, I'm, I am no scholar on Pier Paolo Pasolini. I just, I know a couple things. I know that he is uh, a homosexual. I know that he uh, was a Marxist. I know that he had uh, run-ins with all kinds of officials, uh, Italian and otherwise, uh, Catholic and otherwise. Uh, I do know that he made uh, one of the best films uh, depicting the Christ, which is, I guess, what, the gospel? according to St. Matthew or something like that. Uh, he's got his trilogy of life, the Decamerian, the Canterbury Tales, Arabian Nights. I've seen none of these films, but I was, I was looking around at some possibilities and I, I saw that Teorema uh, sounded kind of interesting. It was about a mysterious visitor who shows up and seduces every member of the family and then leaves. <laughs> and... That seemed interesting to me, and I, I'm really glad that we watched this movie because uh, there's very, very little talking, uh, and and I I enjoyed it. I feel like I got a lot of uh, a lot out of the visual medium of film by being shown things. Uh, I really, really think that Pasolini's got such a beautiful eye for cinema, so I'm I'm very much looking forward to checking out some of his other famous works. Um, but this film. Roger Ebert has a terrific review about this film because the top line of it basically just says, I don't think I'm ready to review this movie. I think I need to wait. I think I need to let it simmer in my body a little bit longer. I think I need to see it again. <clears throat> Which, if you haven't watched it, maybe it makes it sound like it's this confusing movie. But no, it's not confusing. It's, it's very followable. It's very easy to follow. The thing about it that I related to in Roger Ebert's review was simply the feeling of, of not really knowing how I feel. Because with this title of Theorem, right, it really does kind of play out like this strange experiment where you have the father, the mother, the son, the daughter, and the maid of this bourgeois family, this Milanese family in Italy. And there's this, like, announcement made that a visitor is going to be coming and staying with them, and he is beautiful. But he's not, like, wow, beautiful. He's not, like, Dorian Gray or something. He's, like... Just a normal, handsome dude, right? And it's Terrence Stamp, and he's a young guy, and I guess he had just done the Fellini movie, so he was in Italy, and Pasolini was like, why don't you come play this sexy dude? And I really appreciated how the, the film kind of happens in 
I guess really four parts, but the first part is just kind of this introduction. Um, there's kind of this out of out of nowhere at the very beginning scene that feels like it's like a documentary where we're like interviewing somebody about something and it's it's very uh, vague at first because we have no context. We come to find out later uh, that that this first scene that we see is actually of the father at the end of the film once he gives away the factory to the workers. So that's the very first thing you see. But then we go into this beautiful sepia tone section with like no dialogue where we where we meet each individual member of this family and we kind of see see them all in their element and it's this it's kind of cool once you look back on it it's like the sepia tone section is life without i guess knowing this angelic or demonic authentic <laughs> person so we see each of them individually in the sepia tone section it's beautiful and then the announcement is made terrence stamp arrives he has no name he's just the visitor and we we kind of slowly get to see him with each member of the family and it's really kind of beautifully done uh you know m maybe the fact that pasolini is an out homosexual had something to do with the way that this story unfolds but honestly I, I, it doesn't even matter because the cool thing is it, it kind of explores just the nature of desire or the nature of lust or love or whatever. Uh, I will say the movie's not like erotic in any way, um, which is not like a good or bad thing. I'm just letting you know that, you know, you can watch this with anybody <laughs> pretty much. Um, but I, I, it's really kind of awesome how this visitor character in, in, the, in the least judgmental way possible with no judgment at all, um, kind of accepts these advances from everyone in the family. Some of them are a little more forward than others. The maid is pretty forward. The mom is pretty forward. Uh, the dad is not. But the brother is like kind of super down. And the sister, who maybe you recognized her, she was in uh, uh, Balthazar, the Bresson film that we watched years ago at this point. And she was also in Godard's Weekend. Uh, so this, this, this girl's all over the place. Uh, it was really nice to see her on screen. I, I don't know how to say her name, but here she is. And uh, yeah, I, I, it was nice to see some familiar faces. But uh, the, I'll, I'll kind of tidy this up. Uh, we, we have each family member seduced by or, or participate in sexual activity with, with this visitor. Then it is announced that he's leaving. And then we go through each one of them again and kind of their confession to him almost of like, what am I going to do without you? And then he's gone. And then the third part of the film is kind of each one of them individually dealing with the absence of, of this, this figure, this, this energy, whatever. Um, the maid has this incredible storyline. She basically becomes like a saint and is a, a, a miracle worker. Uh, the mother kind of becomes like, she's like a gay cruiser now. She's like out there you know, picking up young men. And, and the whole way that it's shown to us is, is very much like gay cruising culture, I guess. Uh, and I, so like we're, we're using her, she's this older woman seeking out these younger men, but the way that it's being shown to us has a bit of this cruising element. Even the father, I mean, the very last scene in the train station, there is clearly a, a recognition with this young man that like, we're gonna go into the bathroom now. And the young man goes into the public restroom, and instead of following him, the father just like fully strips naked in the in the train station, and goes to this this scenic place that we keep have we've been getting flashes of this place throughout the film. It's this like black desert volcano mountain, and now at the end of the film, that's where the dad winds up naked, in this in this place. And <laughs> all of this to say that we through. Pasolini has kind of just posed this, this question where it's kind of like, if, if pure, authentic human enters life, how does it affect or adjust or destroy our own identity and what we have kind of built for ourselves, right? This, the, almost like with how quick everything is destroyed by just meeting this one person. It's like, wow, how, what is my life? <laughs> um, and the son kind of goes through it in the most, I guess, uh, recognizable way, perhaps. He kind of translates his pain and anguish into his art. And so he starts doing 
kind of really interesting art and then does this beautiful monologue um, about the nature of the artist and, and how like within every masterpiece is like some scared little boy like with a trembling hand hoping to get the right brush strokes or whatever. Uh, it's just, like, I, I seriously was so caught off guard by this movie. I really, really loved it. Uh, and I think it's one that I'm gonna enjoy revisiting. Um, yeah, I, I can't wait to kind of check out more Pasolini because he's just such an interesting guy. Even just like reading on the Wikipedia about him, I was just like, this is kind of a cool dude. Um, there's even a, a, like a, a very short, like two minute little introduction of the film on Criterion Channel that you can watch of Pasolini talking about uh, the film. And I'm, I'm sure I've just regurgitated a couple things that he says in that little video, but it's, it is nice to kind of see and hear the artist talking about this piece of art because it is a very interesting to dissect little piece. Yeah, I was I was very pleased. Um, so yeah, man, our, our our Pride Month was was pretty miraculous. I mean, we theme or otherwise, I like to spread the love with with who we are uh, seeing films from. So it was really nice to kind of uh, experience some some films through the lens of uh, our LGBT filmmakers uh, across time. So yeah, we we will have a new pick tomorrow. Looking forward to that. Uh, hopefully next time we see each other, Groot will be with me. I love doing these with Groot. Groot loves watching movies too. He's just such a cinephile. You have, you have no idea. He's always like, oh, I'm Groot. And I'm like, I know. Anyway, um, love you guys. It's the 4th of July where I am, so enjoy that. I guess it's tomorrow, but you know, whatever. If you're watching this like in January of 2025 or something, like, eh, it's not 4th of July anymore. But hey, how good was Teorema? Is that how you say it? Theorem? It doesn't matter really. <laughs> Follow us right here at Filmstruck Film Club. Keep in touch. Let's 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 stay up on this stuff. We got new films every week. We're gonna do this again all the time. So come on back. All right. Much love. I'll talk to you later.